Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to show you a brand new game from Bamboozle called World Pup Soccer. Since it was just released today I have not even had a chance to play it with my students but I always like to test everything out, look at all the features, all the options, know how to play the game myself before I play it with my students, especially since I teach young students as young as five up to 15 years old. So I need to know how I'm going to play it differently with those different ages. Plus I have two students that are learning about sports right now. So I am super excited to play this game with them and I know they are going to love it. Also, it is free to use for everyone. So if you have the free version of Bamboozle, you can use this for free while the World Cup series is playing. And I don't know anything about soccer, so I had to look it up and it says online that it is 29 days. So today is November 21st. So you have 29 days starting today to use this game for free. And of course, if you have the paid version of Bamboozle, you can continue using this game with your students. So let's take a look at the game. So I just picked a random game here, something simple that I would use with my students. What animals do you see? When I click play and then world pup soccer, we have our main menu. So this is super important and I love this option because with me, I teach one student at a time and our lessons are only 25 minutes long. So I need to keep my games short because if I have too many questions, it's gonna take the entire class time. So it's excellent that you can choose a very small amount of questions to make a fast game, or you can choose many questions up to 50, 25 each for two students, two teams, that way you can make the game last longer. So here I have at the top the number of teams, so you can have low as two teams, up to eight teams, and then you have your questions. To make it even, of course, each team get the same amount of questions, it will just increase by the number of teams that you have. So I'm gonna keep it pretty short here. Let's do 10 questions, so five each with two teams. I'm gonna click next, and then I have my teams. I can click on the team, and I can name the team, if I wanted to, or I could just keep it the same, team one, team two, and you can choose the country for your team. You can either make it random if you don't have time to name all the teams or choose the teams. It just changes the countries randomly, or you can click on the country name and your students can choose their teams. Let's do the USA versus Japan. Then we have the most important thing, at least I think it's the most important, my options. The first three are pretty self-explanatory, full screen, on or off, music, that's like the background music while you're playing, on or off, and the sounds. These would be like the animation sounds, on or off. I'm keeping them off so they don't distract me while I'm trying to talk and explain the games. Then I have the three important options here, the goal zones, my questions, and my dice. These are the ones I'm going to be explaining and walking through today. So first, I'm gonna start with them all three on, so you can see what that looks like. So I have my option set, my team set, I am ready to begin. Super cute, I love the animals, I love the uniforms. So we have my goalie, the left I could see how many shots I have, 10 total, five each. I have the menu, so there are some options you can change during the game but there's other options that you have to choose before you start. So I can change the screen, the music sounds, and the goal zones if you change your mind. And then here I have my two teams and I have my ball. So first I'm gonna click on the ball and that of course brings up your question. So the student answers the question or the team answers the question, then you check. If they got it correct, of course, you click okay. If they got it wrong, you would click on oops. So let's click OK. So here's my dice. This is the dice I have on. The dice that you roll equals the points that team gets if they score a goal. So you're gonna see the zones. Remember I kept the zones on. One, two, three, or four. So there are four options for the student to kick and whether it scores a goal 
is random. That's important to know. There's no way to know which number is going to score the goal and which number the goalie is going to block. And I did learn something just today that when there are four options, three of them will be goals and only one of them is being blocked. So you have a 75% chance of getting a goal. So let's just go with one because I don't know what it's going to be. And goal, since I scored a goal, my team one gets five points. Now let's go to team two. I'm gonna click on my ball. What animal is this bear? Good job, okay, roll the dice. Two points if I get this one. Again, there are four options. Let's click one and goal. So team two gets two points. Now I'm going to go again, click the ball. What animal is this fish? Let's say I miss this one, oops. When you miss it, you don't roll and you miss the goal completely. Now it's team two's turn. How many do you see? Three, three tigers, okay. So notice the second round, I now only have three boxes to choose from. So it went from four to three. This time, only two of the boxes are goals and one box is a miss. So again, I don't know what it is, it's random. So let's see, one, goal, I got the right box. So now I have five points for team one, seven for team two. Okay, go again, what animal is this bird? Roll the dice, one point, let's see if I get it. Now notice the third round, I have only two boxes. Now I have a 50-50 shot. One of them's a miss, one of them is a goal. Let's go with two. I got it right. I'm getting lucky today. All right, let's see if my next team can get lucky. How many do you see? Two horses. Let's see, six points. All right, let's see, 50-50 chance. Number one, goal. I am on a roll today. All right, so that's how I would play with everything on. So I have the goal numbers, the um, dice on, and the questions. And for the number of choices, after I do four, three, two, it goes back to four again and repeats. Oh, notice that time, it was saved by the goalie. So when it's saved by the goalie, you don't get points. So for my younger students, this would not be a good game option because they are going to be very sad if they don't get all the points. So let's take a look at our other options here. So if I go to play, World Pup Soccer, and back to our options. Let's do 10 this time, two teams. And this time I'm going to turn off the goal zones. So everything else is on, goal zones are off. So you're going to notice everything else looks the same. I have my ball, I have my question, I click okay and I have my dice for my points. But this time there are no boxes to choose. This is designed, I found out, <laughs> that it's designed for like if the student has their own device that they're playing on. So now they can choose where to kick the ball. It could still be saved by the goalie and it could still be a goal. It's still going to be that random shot of them getting it. So I'm gonna click and I got the goal. I noticed just from me playing, I seem to get more goals this way, but there's still a chance of it getting saved and blocked by the goalie. So let's do another one, kangaroo, one point. Let's see if I can get it, and oh, I got blocked by my goalie. So keep that in mind, with on or off with the goal zones, there's still a shot of it going through and getting a point, and there's still that chance of it getting blocked by the goalie. And again, you can change it during game to turn them on, or you can turn them back off. So let's go to our next option. So we checked out the goal zones on and off. Now let's turn the goal zones back on and let's turn the questions off. So with the questions off, Pretty self-explanatory. Everything's gonna be the same that I kept on. But notice when I click on the ball, 
There's no questions. This would be just for a fun, quick game to play on your free time, but no questions involved. But we still have the boxes and we still have the points. So that one's pretty self-explanatory, I believe. Again, rolls the dice, no question. Shoot the ball, see if you score. Goal. All right, let's go to our next option. So now I have the goal zones, I have the questions, I can turn those back on. And now I'm gonna turn the dice off. So with the dice off, I still have my ball. But this time when I answer the question, correct, there is no dice to roll. So I could still choose my box. I got a goal. So how many points do you get? Well, since there's no dice to roll with points, you just get one point per goal. So again, team two, okay. Shoot my goal and goal one point. So this helps keep those points more even if you're playing against a student. So you don't have those students who get six points and then another one gets one point. This keeps it more evenly matched, but you still have that random goal versus save from the goalie. So let's go back one more time and go into our game. So keep that in mind that there's always going to be that randomness of the goalie blocking versus getting the goal. Um, I do hope that they add an option to where it always gets a goal because I know with my very young students that they get really upset when they don't win or get the points. And I only have 25 minutes with them, so I don't have time for them to have a meltdown if they lose a game. I have one student who lost in tic-tac-toe to me one time, and now she refuses to ever play tic-tac-toe with me again. So it'll be nice to have that option to where you don't have to worry about the student not getting a point. So hopefully they add that option, but right now they have so many different options to help make the game go faster, go longer, and make it easier for the student to play. And keep in mind, you can pick and choose different combinations of the goal zones being on or off, the questions on or off, or the dice on or off to have fun with your student. And also one thing I've learned about Bamboozle in the short time I've been using it is that they really do consider teacher feedback. So if you ever have any ideas to make a game better, to make it easier for your students, more fun for your students, make sure you let them know because they do listen and they can add those features or make improvements for the games. So hopefully this was helpful for you so you can use it with your students. And I plan to make more videos about the other games on Bamboozle. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're interested in seeing those other videos that I make. And if you have questions, of course, always let me know. Bye everyone and enjoy playing.